appreciate it very much, and I thank the panel for their testimony. Uh, Mr. Bedalian, uh, under federal law, an individual who has access to affordable minimal essential coverage through their employer is not eligible for the subsidy on the exchange. Based on GAO's work, what are the federal and state exchanges doing to assess whether an applicant has access to employer-sponsored insurance before providing uh, them a taxpayer-funded subsidy? Uh, thank you for your question, Mr. Bilirakis. Uh, for the scenarios we conducted, uh, I believe there were four of those instances. Uh, we did not detect any activity between the, the, uh, the exchanges and the employer. Thank you. Uh, another question for you, sir. Uh, are you aware of any actions that the federal and state marketplaces have taken in response to your findings? Uh, the federal marketplace uh, has, has not, to our knowledge. As I mentioned, we detected no changes in the uh, control environment between 2014 and 2015. At least two of the states we spoke with, as I mentioned to Mr. Guthrie, Kentucky is one of them. Uh, they gave us specific uh, information as to the actions they are currently taking, as well as uh, the California State Exchange. We had an extensive discussion with them and they provided us with an overview of what they are doing and plan to do, and they promised us additional details to include in our uh, final report on this. Uh, on so this the states report. have been able to make changes in response to your findings in, in just a few months, but CMS has not made changes even though they had more than a year. Is that correct? Uh, that would be one way to characterize it, yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Yoakum, uh, you indicated that states raised concerns about the quality of Medicare, uh, Medicaid excuse me, eligibility assessments and determinations made by federal exchanges. What actions did CMS take to review those assessments and determinations? Uh, they have, uh, the short answer is at the beginning of, the, of our work, they had not done any. Uh, they did, in response to our recommendations, say that they were going to begin conducting reviews of the facilitated exchange ability to determine Medicaid eligibility, and they've conducted reviews in two states so far. What types of errors were identified, and what were the causes of those errors? Most of the errors were related to, to income verification. There were training issues where the individuals who were um, doing the reviews were, were not doing them correctly, so there was a need to train staff. And then uh, the last issue d does have to do with um, transferring the applications and the application information between the exchanges and the Medicaid programs. And uh, no corrective action has been taken, is that correct? At this point, the CMS has taken some actions, but none that we would consider sufficient to, to address the concerns. Okay, thank you very much. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. 